The final part of our tutorial turns to a more recent insight, which is the permanent, cumulative impact of carbon dioxide emissions on climate. Charney, Nordhaus and others all agreed in the 1970s it was necessary to reduce emissions to control the global temperature rise. But it only became apparent in the 2000s just how far they had to be reduced. This is a consequence of the extraordinary longevity of fossil carbon. David Archer, who, by the way, runs a wonderful online course on climate change for anyone who wants to go deeper into these issues, at the University of Chicago. David demonstrated in a series of papers that fossil carbon released into the climate system continues to affect global temperatures for hundreds of thousands of years. And as a consequence of this, Susan Solomon and others pointed out in 2009 that temperatures will keep rising as long as we continue putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Just to demonstrate this point, this graph shows the impact with a very simple climate model of zeroing emissions in 2020, shown in blue, with a hypothetical business as usual scenario shown in red. If we zero out emissions magically somehow in 2020, atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations will start, would st be expected to start to fall, but they wouldn't fall all the way down to pre-industrial. And the temperature response is even simpler. It flatlines. This was a pretty sobering result. Up to the 2000s, most people were thinking that a low but steady rate of carbon dioxide emissions would be, in a sense, sustainable, in the sense of consistent with stable temperatures. But what these results showed was that the only sustainable net rate of fossil carbon dioxide emissions is zero. I stress net because, of course, we still have to breathe, but the CO2 we exhale has been trapped by plants going into our food, so it doesn't actually contribute to rising carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. And there are also ways although they still need to be tested at scale, of compensating for fossil carbon emissions by recapturing CO2 from the atmosphere and, as it were, refossilizing it in permanent geological storage. Sea level keeps rising for centuries, even after temperatures have leveled off. This graph shows the impact of a three per year reduction starting from 2020, which might limit carbon dioxide induced warming to one and a half degrees, although total warming would likely to be higher than that because of the impact of other pollutants. And this compares it to the response to the business as usual scenario um, which, in which emissions are allowed to continue to rise. You can see that temperatures continue to skyrocket under the business as usual scenario and have stabilized under this 3% reduction from 2020, but sea level rise continues in both scenarios, although of course it's much slower and more manageable under the uh, emission reduction scenario. The cumulative nature of carbon dioxide emissions also speaks to the impact of delay in starting emission reductions. To get the same peak warming that we expect starting 3% reductions today, we would only have had to have reduced emissions at 1% per year if we'd started in the early 1980s. So these are the key points that are covered in this tutorial. I've explained how the essential physics linking carbon dioxide levels, global temperatures, and global sea level has been understood for over 100 years and generally accepted by the scientific community at least since the 1950s. The contribution of fossil fuel emissions to rising carbon dioxide concentrations has also been largely understood since the 1960s. I discussed how early modelling experiments in the 60s and 70s allowed scientists such as the authors of the Charney Report in 1979 to predict a substantial warming due to fossil fuel emissions well before any such warming could be detected in the observations. I emphasized how the detection of human influence on climate in the 1990s and 2000s, although it got a lot of attention at the time, really just confirmed what the scientific community already knew from other lines of evidence. And that throughout that time, scientists were just as prepared to believe that human-induced warming was greater than observed warming, so natural factors were masking a still bigger human-induced warming than we were seeing in the observations, than that the human contribution was smaller than the observed warming. And finally, I've emphasized how recent research shows that we need to reduce global net carbon dioxide emissions to zero to stabilize global temperatures, and that even then, sea level will continue to rise thanks to past emissions. I hope you found this tutorial useful, Naturally, in trying to sum up the history of climate change science in 45 minutes, I've left a great deal out and failed to mention many important contributions, but this reflects my view, at least, of some of the highlights. Thank you for your attention.